Cora Macabre is one of summer's greatest treasures. It's sweet and juicy and so tender that you can technically eat it raw. Meanwhile, out of season corn just isn't the same. It's usually dried out and not as nearly sweet, but it turns out you can hold on to that summer a little bit longer. You just need to know how to freeze your corn. Turns out it's super easy and you can stash the corn in the freezer for those days when you're dreaming of sunny days. The best part about freezing your corn is that it will last about six to nine months in the freezer. So you won't have to be without fresh corn for very long. When you're ready to use it, just pull it out of the freezer, give it a quick boil to heat it up, and then try some of your favorite corn recipes. And stay tuned to the end of this video where I'm going to share with you my mom's freezer corn recipe. Today, we're not making that. We are just blanching it and getting it ready so that I can use it in other recipes. But my mom's freezer corn recipe is something that you can serve as a side dish itself. So stay to the end of the video where I'm gonna share that recipe with you. My friend just came back from Tabor and brought me some Tabor corn. What's so special about Tabor corn? Well, to native Albertans, Tabor corn is something special and it's home of the best corn in the world. Tabor corn is so craved that knockoff stands pop up on roadside stalls all across Alberta. Yes, fake Tabor corn is pawned off on unsuspecting buyers. The only way to make sure that you have Tabor corn is to make sure that it has a certificate of authenticity or to go to a Tabor corn farm itself and pick it up directly from them. So what's so special about Tabor corn? Simply the sun. Tabor gets more of it than any other region in Canada and holds the title of the corn capital of Canada. The sun warms the soil around the crop by day and the cool Alberta nights bring out the natural sugars. A sweet crisp cob is the result, making it a sought out late summer treat. So let's go blanch some corn so that we can enjoy it later on in the winter. So how do you freeze corn on the cob? The first step is to shuck the corn, which is pulling off all the outer leaves or husks and silk, and then snap or cut off any long ends for easier storage. It is a beautiful day outside, and so we're gonna husk the corn outside and keep the mess out here. So the way you know that these cobs are done, well, the farmer, lets you know, but this on top being brown is one way to know for sure that your corn is done. So let's take a quick peek. Oh yeah, this is beautiful. Now from first glance, this is not a peaches and cream corn. A peaches and cream corn would have two color variations. I'm gonna work on getting the silks off once I go inside. Next, I'm looking at the cobs to make sure that the ends are fine and the bottoms, and I might chop them out, chop them off as needed. For example, like this one. And throw that away. And in advance, I'm actually going to cut out that bad spot before I blanch it. So while I'm doing this, I'm actually going to go get my pot and get some water boiling. I'll be right back. That beautiful cob of corn. Mm -hmm. 
Step two, you're going to blanch the corn. Natural enzymes in corn need to be inactivated before freezing to prevent loss of color and nutrients and flavor and texture change. Bring a large pot of water to a boil. Add the corn on the cob and cook for two to three minutes. A little bit of a splash. Remove the ears from the water, then submerge them immediately in an ice water bath to shock them or stop them from cooking. And here we have them submerged in the sink. We want them to get cold. My ice is quickly melting. How hot those cups are. And we're going to sit and wait till these get cold to the touch. Lay the corn out on paper towel or a regular dish towel because it's important that your corn is both cool to the touch and dry before you freeze it so that ice crystals do not form on the cobs or corn, which can make the corn soggy when you reheat it later. So at this point in the process, now that the cobs are dried, you actually could take these and put them directly into your freezer just like this. Now you can wrap them up in saran wrap and put them into that so they stay individually and they don't stick together. But not everyone has that much space in their freezer to put a whole cob or four cobs in a Ziploc bag. It takes up a lot of space. So, and I have done it this way, but I need more space in my freezer, so we are going to cut the corn off of the cobs this time. Now, I have to admit that this is the smallest amount of corn that I have ever done. Usually we have bags of corn and we do a lot of it, but with only three of us at home, and I didn't go to Tabor this year, we are just doing these 12 cups. So it's more to show you how to do this process. Um, we're going to end so that I have some ready and fresh for all those great recipes. So I love to put corn in my chili Cafe Rio recipe. I love to put corn in corn chatter and fresh corn always tastes better than the stuff that you can buy in the store. So that's why we do the hard work to put this together so that you can enjoy fresh vegetables in your meals all throughout the year and not just at harvest time. Now, I just realized as I mentioned those recipes that I do not have them on my YouTube channel, so I guess I've got some work cut out for me in the meantime as I put those videos up. So stay tuned in the weeks to come to look for those recipes and see how I use this corn. So on to the next stage. Now you can take this corn and cut it off individually on this, but it makes a huge mess. So when you do that, I usually put it in a cookie sheet because the corn goes everywhere. But I saw this hack and I wanted to give it a try. You take a bun pan, you rest the corn cob here on it, and normally I just do it making a mess, but I'd like to be neater and cleaner for you guys. So we're going to slice down and away from ourselves, not cutting close, to, as close as we can to the cob. Because we're trying to just get the kernels and not the other stuff. And look at how neat and tidy that is. Oh, I love it as it just comes off in big sheets. Now here's another thing that you might not know about me. I had braces as an adult. And when you have braces, you can't eat corn on the cob unless you cut it off. And so during that time, I learned to love 
cutting off the corn off the cob. So even when I get corn on the cob, I prefer cutting it off before I eat it. So I'm just getting the milky stuff. But why would you put the whole cob in? Because you're freezing this large cob and there's way more space that you can use effectively in your freezer. See that extra goodness that I was able to get off the cob? Now what I used was the back side of the knife rather than the front side of the knife just to be able to get that off. But you want to be able to enjoy that part of the cob as well. I loved as a kid when they came off in a whole roll like that. Mm. Man, Tabor corn really, truly is the best. Mm. Grateful to have friends that go to Tabor and bring corn back to me. So thanks, Ramey and Alexis, for this awesome treat. I don't have any corn for dinner tonight. So these two cobs, which are blanched, I'm going to put in the fridge for the next couple of hours. And then when dinner time comes, I'm gonna break them in half and boil them again so that they are cooked through and ready for dinner tonight. Now, I still made a little bit of a mess. This is definitely a great hack to use. And I'm gonna show you how much of this corn we got from 10 cobs of corn. And here's another fun fact about Tabor corn. My uncle and cousin in 2019 tied for first place as the Tabor corn kings. Now, they had to eat a certain number of cobs in order to win the race. Comment below on how many cobs you think they had to eat and what was the time limit in order to win. If you don't cook your corn, we're freezing it. Texture will be gummy and mushy when you defrost it. It's not ideal. Yes, I've tried it. Simply blanching the corn will give you the best texture and it only takes a few minutes. Most frozen veggies that you buy in the grocery store have been blanched and flash frozen to preserve the flavor and texture. See, look at those awesome pieces of corn that just got cut off. I love it. Okay, so Ziploc freezer bags. It is important that you use freezer size bags. Now, try to do the right size of portion for your family or the right amount you're going to need for each recipe. Okay, so that is one cup of corn. That doesn't look very much, like very much. And I know that I use more than one cup of corn when I do my recipes. So I'm going to put in two cups of corn in each of these bags. And yes, they are big bags in comparison to the amount of corn, but that's okay. One thing I forgot to do was mark the date on your Ziploc bags. So it is September, 2022. And that way I know how long they have been in my freezer for, and I can make sure that I use the oldest ones first. Oh, it's all over my fingers. I'm not going to seal these up yet. Into a bigger pole would have been easier to do, but that's what we've got. Bags are clean. What's important now is to make sure that all the air is out. So you're going to squeeze out all the air and close it and then there is a little trick you take a straw 
you put it in your bag and suck out all the air. So here's the final product. They've been in the freezer for less than 24 hours, but they are frozen solid. And we got five bags of two cups each with 10 cobs of corn. So this is the freezer corn recipe that I promised at the beginning of the video. The eight cups of corn is cut fresh from the cob. Adding the other ingredients, you boil together for three minutes, stirring constantly. Take two cups at a time and put in your freezy bags and freeze. Then when it's ready to use, you pull it out, reheat, and it's cooked and ready to serve. If you enjoyed this video, you'd probably really enjoy my product review I did on the Frigidaire ice maker. I used all that ice today was made in the Frigidaire ice maker and it's something I use frequently. So click on that link that's going to come up at the end of this video and you can see the product review that I did on that. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to let me know by clicking on that little thumbs up button leaving a comment or even sharing this video so that it gets more views. Thanks to all my returning subscribers for your continued love and support. You guys are the absolute best. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I'd love it if you did. Just click that red subscribe button and then click the little bell so you get notified when I publish a new video each week. Thanks and have a great week. Oh, I'm not sure I really want to watch the replay of this. Okay, here we go again.